Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Orwell. So let's get right back into it. Last time, if you will recall, we were checking out the links between, well, our main or initial suspect, Cassandra, her friend Juliet, uh, their mutual friend Harrison, I believe is his name, even though I can't see it there, and their, what turns out to be their professor, at one point, Abraham Goldfels, who was also the temporary, well, he was the leader of the activist group they were all associated with until he resigned. So we've got a few new things to check out today. The first thing is going to be Harrison's timeline. So that's his social media page. So we're going to click on his little page here so we know that he was actually a guest or an auditor at Goldfell's lessons. So he was not necessarily a, or officially a student. All right, so okay, so he's saying up here, I'm considering to change my profession to being a full-time prophet. Uh, we could see that his occupation is apparently media punk, whatever that means. So we'll go ahead and update that. Media punk? What does that even mean? That's what I'm saying. All right, so he doesn't give us any of his biographical information here. He, like uh, our other subjects or suspects, likes the band The Targets. He also likes The Haunted House Club and The Cash, which I'm assuming is another band, and The National Beholder, which is our friendly neighborhood newspaper. All right, so a couple months ago in January, he had a post that was deleted and whatever that post was, it caused Cassandra to say, everything all right with you? And then Harrison said, now it is. Good fucking riddance. And that was three hours about after he posted it. So let's go ahead and put that here. So he, do we have something to hide then, Mr. O'Donnell? All right, let's keep going down. Okay, yeah, so he did, all right, so he deleted multiple posts. And then here, Peter Fletcher, who has apparently a bitchin' mohawk of multiple colors, said, I feel sorry for the girl. It's clear she's been attacked and just panicked. Now they'll have her ass for this. And this was in July of 2016. This is probably referring to when Cassandra was arrested. And then this guy whistles, we didn't start the fire. Yet another deleted post. This was before all that. Um, or I guess this was when the protest was. This was a, a week or two weeks afterwards. So the fascists turned this into a nightmare. People didn't do shit. The protest was peaceful until they showed up. They stormed the crowd and provoked what happened. So when he says fascist, does he actually mean like a so-called self-identified fascist group? Or is he like referring to the police, I wonder? Okay, huh? Have you been suffering from a bad case of self-censorship lately? Or what's happening on your timeline? Go back a little further. Well, look at this. Okay, so this couple rocked the show, as it will rock the rest of the goddamn nation. And this is part of a conflict. So it claims that Harrison and Juliet are an item, and that they are both members of a band. But it's going to conflict with a data chunk we haven't yet seen. That's interesting. And this was not deleted, obviously. All right, so Juliet says, thank you for taking me along. Honestly, I didn't think that I'd be welcomed so warmly, nor that my humble skills would be worth me coming along. Whoever this is, Bobit, he's got a flying V on his avatar here, so this guy must be cool. Probably has a ponytail too. If you've got it, flaunt it. And you definitely got it, baby. Pulling the strings of a fancy guitar and the spotlights on stage suits you well. It makes you look even more awesome. Thank you, Mikey. Guess I should have pursued that musical career before even beginning my studies. Studies give me headaches at the moment. Thank God it'll all be over soon. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so, Mike, why don't you go and ask Juliet out right away, huh? No need for hiding anything. I can provide a nose correction just for you to make you look just as awesome. You want that? No? Then off, you fuck. 
So this tells us apparently that Harrison is easily jealous. He feels like this Mike guy is flirting with this lady and he's threatening to rearrange his face. All right, Harry, calm down a bit, will you? I don't think Mike meant to be flirty. Mike, sorry, Harry went a bit over the top there. All right, so this is several months before. Never thought I was going to write this one day. First day at Stelligan. Feeling so elite, it makes me want to comb my hair. Any survival tips, my most valuable social network associates? You? At Stelligan? Lose a bet? Nice joke, Harry. You're a bit early for April Fool's, you know. Why can't I go and attend university like a decent human being without raising eyebrows everywhere, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's as a guest in a lecture of a friend. You got me, but still, shit just got real. So he claims that um, Goldfells is a friend of his there. Alright, so I wonder where the conflicting data chunk is going to be. We don't have that yet. Alright, well we'll hold off on that for the moment then. All right, make sure there's nothing new down here before we move on. Now that's good. Okay, so now we're going to check out apparently the website, oh, well, of Rosentech, but we're going to wait just a moment because there is something new on Juliet's timeline. Or maybe this is where our conflict will be? So we have to kind of scroll. We already went through this stuff. This was the thing about the muffins. Um, did we already? Yeah, we already submitted that. We submitted that. There's got to be something new here. Okay, really? Yeah, we already see it's a data submitted. We already... Didn't we already look at this article? Uh, yeah, we did. So what, what is new there? What am I missing? Oh, it's the portrait. I see, okay. Um, let's go back to, oh, we never put a portrait on her thing, that's why. Whoops, there we go. All right, so she is a PR assistant. She works at Rosen Tech. And if I'm not mistaken, there was something about Rosen Tech partnering with, um, who were they going to partner with? It might have... I don't know, I'll have to recheck that. Now, why is there still a star here? Did I forget something else? No, we submit... Oh, the relationship status hasn't been submitted. We know that she's a friend with Cassie. What am I... All right, I'm going to scroll down this one more time. I don't... Again, these have already been submitted. Obviously, we still need her relationship status, and she's allegedly involved with Harrison. Oh, maybe we didn't go to the website. So it looks like they have a, like her parents, I guess, have a family website. We are the Carringtons. Welcome to our website. Jonathan and Esther, or Esther, I don't know, Carrington. Uh... I kind of feel like, did I at least look at the beginning of this? Because I remember this. A man walks into a bar and meets the girl of his dreams. They marry, settle down, and have four daughters. And we must have looked at that. Alright. So, just skimming over this. This is the brief little biography of how they met and got married. In 85, they had their first daughter, April. There would be three more to follow. So here's April. And she's McIntyre Carrington, so she's married, apparently. She is the headmistress at Farview Elementary. Her favorite food is mashed potatoes. Her favorite color is indigo. And her favorite pastimes are writing and playing the piano. And her favorite book or movie is Labyrinth. Good choice. All right, again, I'm just going to skim here. So April is the firstborn daughter. Um, and she's married to Roy McIntyre. All right. Now here's May Carrington, who's entirely too happy to be seeing herself in her phone there. Uh, oh, she is the CEO and founder of Mickloth Limited? Alright. Uh, so it had always been crystal clear that she would found her own company one day. And so she made a well-known clothing startup. Mickloth or Mike Loth or whatever. 
And then here is June. And we get her details here. Back to the Future 2, that's another good choice right there. Uh, okay, she's an engineer, and she's now the Bonton Machine Works, uh, working for the Bonton Machine Works company. Alright. And finally, we have Juliet, who's apparently left-handed, but that probably doesn't matter. And now we have her exact birth date, which apparently is Valentine's Day. Okay, her favorite food, which apparently is important. Oh, actually, yeah, because the whole muffins thing. Cassandra baited her to come out one night with muffins. And they were probably banana nut. That would be my guess. Yum, says Symes. If we fail to prevent the next assault due to you processing random data, I won't be taking the fall. Oh, so I'm... Well, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't realize I was supposed to exercise my own discretion in putting some of these... Like, he'll probably say the same thing if I say her favorite color is red. It is relevant that she likes playing the guitar. Or it should be relevant, I think. Uh, she's got a favorite book or movie, To Kill a Mockingbird. I mean, well, what's wrong with processing random data? You never know if it will, be if it will become useful. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Until you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. Harper Lee, To Kill a Mockingbird. I actually read that one. Great book. I'm, you know, I'm just going to put this in there because... I don't know. How am I supposed to know whether or not it's useful? Okay, I like a joke as much as the next person. But her favorite color? Do you really think that is pertinent information right now? There is an active bomb threat right now. Could you please focus on that? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Whatever. All right. Oh, so we found the conflict, but let's get back to that in a moment. So after, so she allegedly ended her band career once she was single again, which makes me think that that was um, outdated information that she and Harrison were dating and that they were in a band together. And after that, she focused her studies of media economy over at Stelligan. And it appears that she's now single. So we're going to... That seems like it's the most up-to-date thing. And we know who her parents are, but... This will add the parents themselves to our... Our Rolodex here, if you will. Alright. Alright, something's going on on the listener. This is Juliet. And she's talking to Cassie. I guess Cassie's out of prison. Or jail. Hello. Hi, Cass. What happened yesterday? Juliet, this is... Uh oh this is Joseph on Cassandra's account. Oh, sorry. Hi, Joseph. I didn't know you had access to Cassie's account. Nice to finally talk to you. So she gave access to Joseph. To her chat account. Alright. Uh, okay, you too, Juliet. Have you seen Cassandra since yesterday evening? Heard from her at all? I spoke to her last night via chat. She seemed quite upset about the whole Freedom Plaza thing and something else she wouldn't talk about. Then there was someone at her door, so she went to answer it and never came back. I assumed it was you. We were supposed to meet for dinner, but I had an unexpected meeting with a client. She wasn't exactly happy about the chains of plans. She quit the chat and that was it. I haven't heard from her since. Uh, in that case, I think she's probably at home stewing away. Well, I just tried that. She did give me the key to her flat two months ago, but no Cassie. Also, her PC was still on. Hmm. I guess calling her didn't work either? I tried. No answer. Damn, I hate myself right now. Did you set your number to private? Otherwise, she's probably just avoiding you. Private is my default setting. After all, I am a lawyer. We know that. Oh, see, that, that would make it seem like Cassie is a lawyer. No, that's wrong, obviously. Haha, ha, Cassie told me you were funny. I think you shouldn't worry too much. It's probably nothing. What the hell is funny about that? Uh, when Cassie's mad, she usually ghosts and wanders around the city. She'll be back in no time. Yeah, she does get a bit fiery at times. We had an argument once, and, well, guess what happened? Is 
See, this is why I wanted to talk to you. I feel like sometimes you know her better than I do, and I'm her goddamn boyfriend. Oh, I doubt that somehow. I mean, you two were in this thought group together, right? You both went to the Freedom Plaza protest. And so I thought maybe you'd know other places that could be important for her or the two of you, where she could be at. Joseph, I'm sorry, Freedom Plaza was organized by thought. Yeah, but Harrison did all the planning for it. I don't know much else. Oh, I see. I wish I could help, but honestly, I don't have a clue. Well, thank you anyway, Juliet. I'll mention it. I'll text you when she turns up, or if I get an idea. Alright, so... There is a conflict here with a data chunk we have not seen yet. Alright, so going back up here, this is incorrect. Cassie is not a lawyer. That's Joseph using her account. Now, we do need to update something on Cassie, and that is that she gave access to Joseph. Which is, I mean, it's not unusual, but it could possibly muddy the waters in the future. Exactly. Not too uncommon in a relationship, is it? No, but regardless, important. Alright, so... Going back to the what the hell? Okay, so let's let's try and catch up here. So Rosen Tech. All right, Rosen Technologies shaping visions bit by bit. A message from the founder. When I founded Rosen Tech in 1998, my vision was a simple one. There should be tailor-made software for any purpose. Who would have thought that a guy healing from merely an attic in his parents' home? could create the single most important software company in the nation. Certainly not me. Who would have thought that the government would take interest in the company and become its greatest stakeholder? Certainly not me again. Against my wildest expectations, but due to my sheer stubbornness, a lot of persistence, and a little bit of luck, Rosen Tech today employs that... F that? 5.106 workers? I guess that's supposed to be a... A comma instead, like 5,106 workers, and 224 successfully completed projects. Well, you need to hire an editor, just letting you know. And these figures keep increasing so fast that I added a live counter script to this page to keep it up to date. Hmm. Okay. So, what's the essence from my experience? Although I never expected it, my vision proved to be a very strong one. Now let's see what's in yours. Yours sincerely, Victor Rosen. Okay, so that's the welcome page, and we have the Ten Commandments. We at Rosen Tech believe that outstanding quality and performance walk hand in hand with clearly defined rules. Thus, we have phrased Ten Commandments that guide us in our work every day. All right, any vision is valuable. Have you ever thought the future should be like this or like that? <laughs> no, no one's ever thought that. How a certain problem could or should be solved? Of course you have. Do not let these ideas go to waste. They are pure gold. Pursue them. Number two, software can solve any problem. Yes, it can. We live in a time where information is everything. We can reduce massively complex facts to pieces of bit and bytes. We then get carefully designed algorithms to work and marvel at the results produced as our problems are suddenly undone. Three, embrace the client's vision. We think that our valued clients know best what's at the core of their demands and needs, hence it should be their vision, your grand design, that guides your efforts. Alright, we're going to start skimming here, because this, this is a bunch of pablum here. Okay, so open-mindedness and transparency are key. Number five, always stay in touch with the client. Six, synchronous over asynchronous communication. Seven, think about your responsibility. Eight, fix your mistakes, learn from them. Nine, work here and now. 10. You can do better. Alright, so... Well, I guess those are their guiding principles or whatever. Okay, so get in touch. Following the sixth commandment of Rosen Tech, which I don't remember, we rely... Oh, that was the synchronous communication. We rely heavily on communication and collaboration with you. We would like you to call us directly so we can easily discuss your needs. Our vision shaping team is ready any time to form a software that fulfills your needs. Please call. So we have uh, Rami, or Rami French. He is the head of vision shaping. We have Maria Harper, who's the head of PR. Or her friendly substitute, Juliet Carrington. So we have a new portrait and a telephone number for Juliet now. 
So I'm gonna put that number up there. Good work. The listener will also track incoming and outgoing telephone calls of numbers you have added. And then the portrait update. All right, cool. All right, so let's check out the targets. This must have been the band that Harrison and Juliet were in. Okay, the targets, band. We are the track you are ashamed of in your fine-tuned playlist. The unexplainable gap in your seemingly flawless CV, your drunken selfie in your timeline's profile, the porn movie found on your work computer. You cannot avoid us because we are you. We are the targets. I already hate these people. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Okay, so Harrison, for, for some reason, I guess they have like nicknames or something. So Harrison's nickname is Hancock for some reason. And he's the vocalist and the guitarist. So we now have a portrait for him. And he has an alias of Hancock. Oh ho, that's quite an ego we've got there, haven't we? An ego? On a musician? No, oh, don't be ridiculous. Okay, so former members. They had Trotsky. Well, that's an interesting choice of a of a pseudonym there. And there is Juliet, whose name was Tubman. So now we have an alias for Juliet. I wonder if I have to sh if I actually have to move this page to hers, or if I can just like move this over and it'll automatically go to her. I wonder, because it brings her profile up. Let's see what happens. Oh, wrong profile. Well, that answers my question. Alright. Okay. And let's see what else do we have here. Get the gigs page. Get your asses ready for the return of the targets in our new album. For the premiere, we're headed back to the scene of the first crime, the haunted house. And it was cancelled. Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. Okay. Anonymous wrote A friend of mine claims to have heard that Hancock decided to quit the band. But no official statement has been given out. A wholehearted thumbs down for that bull crap. Gotta find me another fave band now. You better do the same. What? And now the whole thing got cancelled? What's going on? Such a shame that Tubman left again. Why? Good lord, not those emos on the show again. Why do you do this to us? Why? Yeehaw, finally. Really looking forward to this one. You gonna play Pipe Dream? So freaking cool. Okay. So Harrison is a former member of the Targets now, as is Juliet. Okay, that's interesting. And let's see. With more and more poverty in the streets, it's about time for the capitalists to finally recognize them as viable target group. It's time for an advertisement for the poor. Out now. Listen to Pipe. Oh God, I don't want to. I really don't want to press play. And yet. see where this is going. I'm waiting for some woes or some ahs, or some oohs, maybe. I, no, no. Okay, that's enough. So that's from their album, Advertisement for the Poor. So that sounds like just some, you know, some land-breaking, or land-breaking, that's not, that, is that even a word? Groundbreaking. <laughs> Shit. Sounds like some groundbreaking punk, man. That's just, you know, I've never heard that before. All right, so we can see their tracks exposed. Advertisement for the Poor, Nosebleed, Sick, Overcome, How You Live, Stripped to the Core, Pipe Dreams, Go Home You're Drunk. Our album is now available at any damn good music store, the physical ones. Screw streaming. Yeah, that, that's going to work for you. And here's something else. Alright, sorry folks, this one's all sold out. Drop by one of our concerts to get one for free or drop Hancock a line. Oh, so we have Hancock's email address, do we? Very good. I wonder if we can get his emails on the listener. 
Yeah, you will now have access to any emails coming in or out of this account. Cool. And, lo and behold. Okay, so first of all, we had, we got that number for Juliet. So the, Esther, was that her mother? I think that's her mother. Welcome to Rosen Tech. This is PR Assistant Julia Carrington speaking. How may I be of sir? Hello, Julia Carrington. This is Esther. You sound so official at work. Oh, hi, Mom. Is this important? You know I can't take personal calls while I'm at work. I just wanted to check in, make sure you were home for dinner tonight. Actually, I'm heading out with some friends for work. Time for some Bonton clubbing. Honey, please don't. On the news, they said it would be advisable to avoid public places. They expect another bombing. Mom, I get that you're worried, but I can't just sit at home with you every night of the week. That's exactly what those terrorists want us to do. Avoid public life. We can't give up our freedom like that. Honey, please, you won't have much freedom left if you're dead. Mom, I won't die. How can you be so sure about that? I could just as easily be hit by a car on my way home to your lovely dinner. Don't say that. Just think. This ridiculous group has gotten you into nothing but trouble. What were they called? All right, jeesh, Mom. Who says jeesh? I'm going to think about it, okay? Thank you, honey. Mom, I'm sorry, but I really have to go now if I don't want Victor Rosen to personally fire me. I, I have to go. Sorry. Love you. Bye. All right, so we can add Victor Rosen. Well, I know it's the wrong profile. I can't just... I can't add it? Oh, I have to add it to Juliet's. Okay, never mind. But that's her boss. I see. And what else was there? She plans to go out in Bonton on Friday evening. It's Friday, and Miss Carrington has plans to go out tonight in Bonton. That information would normally be innocuous, but we know that she actively dislikes going out. People are truly creatures of habit. Maybe she really does want to go out, but this seems a little odd. What is she really doing? And she lives with her parents. Okay. Now to find her parents' address. I mean, how difficult could that possibly be? Alright, so here is uh, Harrison's email. We got a order confirmation and an invoice from today. From Semiramis Flowers. Hello, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you for shopping at Semiramis Flowers. We hereby confirm your order number 122145 of the following products. One bouquet lovely with tag to Angela. Who is Angela? $25? Eh, I guess that's not so bad. The total has already been subtracted from your bank account. Would they actually put the whole number? Why would they do that? Well, I don't care, but thank you for doing that. Alright, so we got Harrison's bank account number. And we know... Oh, we got a related document. And we know that he is... Uh, sending flowers to somebody named Angela. So yeah, he's definitely not with Juliet anymore. That's confirmed. Alright. Very good. Alright, so we go back to the reader, and we find out that there are some new documents found. Uh, we still have all the stuff from the Thought uh, website to go through. Make sure there's nothing new down here, okay. Alright, something new on the Carrington's website. Uh, okay, okay, so I guess this is now relevant, which is why it's coming up, because we were looking for their address. So, it's a house in Malloy Court, which is in Farview. I guess it's a subdivision of Farview. Okay. Huh, funny. This is right around the corner from where I live. And I don't think there's anything else there for us at the moment and then something new here on the target website so we had the canceled uh, album release show we knew that Hancock quit well what what is new here oh I can are there other flyers oh I didn't know that okay well that makes sense 
Okay, so this was Cassie. That's her, her internet handle, as we know. Wow, that was such a blaze. Really love your new guitarist, Tress. Guitarist, tr gu like, like a female guitarist, I guess. We'll definitely come to the Freedom Plaza demo. I just have to get to know Juliet, especially since she is the one organizing this. So there is the conflict. She claims that Thought, or, or more appropriately, that Harrison did all the planning. But we have. Oh, well, how the hell am I supposed to know which is which is correct? I don't. I guess I need to find more. I think I need to find more information. Let's see if there's anything here. And that takes us back here. I don't feel confident enough to select either one of those data chunks yet that are in conflict. Uh, ooh, we got the bank records now. Alright, so we're going to have to go ahead and end this episode right here. I really hope you guys are enjoying this, because I still very much am enjoying it. And we're going to keep going with it. So, please let me know what you think in the comments section, or don't. And hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.